Did you guys think we forgot about this? Because we didn't. And today we think AMD will take the crown back. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of No GPU versus Half-Life 2. A mini series where we pit some of the most random CPUs with integrated graphics against the all-time classic game Half-Life 2. In previous episodes we've tested both Intel and AMD CPUs and in our last Intel took the crown from AMD with a simple Celeron. But can AMD take that crown back? To find out, we're going to be testing this. This is an AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. It's one of their latest APUs. On the CPU side, it has 6 cores, 12 threads and a base clock speed of 3.9 GHz. For graphics, it's running an AMD Radeon Vega 7. Released as part of the 5000 series CPUs on the AM4 platform, you can actually drop one of these into a super old motherboard and it would work perfectly fine. Obviously, you may need to do a BIOS update for that, but that's generally not too hard to do. Now we already know that these APUs can actually game well. We've tested them before with games such as Tomb Raider and they actually do extremely well. But how well does it play Half-Life 2? That's what we're here to find out. So let's get it into a system and check out the game. Okay, so we are now into the game and straight away we can see from the menu that we're already getting an average of 60 frames per second. This appears to actually be locked. So we'll go to the settings and we'll adjust that now. Hit advanced so yes vertical sync is on if we just disable that hit ok apply those changes and then we can see it actually jumps right up just reset our stats there and as you can see we're hitting an average of 294 frames per second now this game is actually capped to around 300 frames per second anyway we could remove that cap but we're not going to for this demo let's just see if it can actually maintain that in a game to kickstart our benchmark we've decided to go to raven home now we know we shouldn't go to raven home but we do love a bit of raven home anyway as we can see we're still already maintaining a 296 fps this is definitely hitting the cap limit of the game so we'll just destroy some barrels see what happens see if it drops anywhere we don't seem to be dropping any kind of frames per second at the moment and our 1% lows are looking fantastic. For anyone that hasn't played this game before, you definitely have to try it out. It's a brilliant game. We've played it so many times, we pretty much know where everything is now. But as we can see, performance wise, this little APU is actually destroying this game completely. There is no issues with it, even with these explosions going off doesn't really dip that much and 0.1% lows took a little bit of a hit there but you couldn't tell in the game there was no effect at all doesn't matter what we do it's actually performing pretty well now because we're obviously hitting the cap here on the engine or game itself and it's a predefined FPS cap that they've put into the game we can actually turn that off all we need to do is go to our console and type FPS underscore max and we'll set it to 3000 because that should give it more than enough leeway to be able to show us what it can actually do we'll reset our stats there and as we can see it's jumped right up so this little APU is actually now pushing this game over well over 400 frames per second we'll keep playing a little bit and we'll see if uh, having things move around actually affect that at all our flashlight on and as you can see it has no problem playing this at all specifically if we are in raven home so we'll skip a little bit more of ahead of the game and we'll see if we're in a more open up environment if it actually affects anything at all so now that we've moved further on in the game and we're in a much more open environment we can see that our fps does take a slight hit now this is still running with an FPS max of 3000, so it should be able to push as much as it could actually do. And it's currently getting around an average of 248. This just demonstrates the difference between the environments when they're more closed to a more open environment. We don't want to die here, so take these guys out. Oh, well, there's one over there. And we can see that it's taken a little bit of a hit, but it's clearly more than playable still. Our 1% lows are actually pretty decent. They're nearly 200 for both. So you're not going to have any problem playing this game on this APU. I wasn't surprised really at this because 
this system or this APU, we know can play other games, particularly things like the 2013 version of Tomb Raider. It plays that perfectly well. You can get a decent 60 FPS game out of that. And this game is from 2004, but it's one of those games that was came out a long time ago. And when it did, we actually had to build super high-end systems, obviously full systems, just to get it to run. Whereas nowadays, you can get it to run perfectly fine. The game is running in 1080p, most highest settings that we can possibly turn up. There's no real presets, but we turn to adjust everything as high as it can. And as you can see, you're going to have fun playing this. Now again, if you haven't played this game, make sure that you give it a go because it is absolutely fantastic. It is number two to Half-Life 1 and I recommend you play Half-Life 1 if you haven't played that also. They actually did do, or somebody did do a remake of this, um, of Half-Life 1 called Black Mesa. It's a much better version uh, than the original, but either one will do. It'll give you the introduction to who the character is and what's going on. You can get away with playing Half-Life 2 on its own. People have, and they've thoroughly enjoyed it. But the game looks still amazing, in my opinion. Valve did a fantastic job of the game. It's a shame they never actually finished the series and came out with like a Half-Life um, 3. They did do two extra versions of this game, which was a um, part one and part two, which were actually very good. And you could see some kind of upgrades to the engines at the time. But apart from that, Clearly, we can play this on an AMD Ryzen 5600G APU. And there we have it. You can actually play Half-Life 2 on an AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, and it runs absolutely beautifully. Even if you remove that FPS cap from the limit, it still performs fantastic. Although, why would you want to play any higher than, what, 300 FPS is what you get with the cap? I'm pretty sure anybody wanting to play that game would probably lower that cap anyway to the hertz of their monitor. Now, this APU did really, really well, but obviously it cannot take a place on our leaderboard unless we've run it against the built-in benchmark of Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. Now, Lost Coast is pretty much the same game, except it is slightly more demanding because it was built mainly to be a bit of a demonstration by Valve of some of their later technologies. But when actually running the benchmark itself, we didn't see any difference in the results. This little APU managed to get over an average of 290 frames per second. And that actually was with the cap on or off. It didn't seem to make a difference when you were running that video test. It didn't seem to pay much attention to the console settings at all. But that does actually mean that this APU takes the crown on our leader. Now we think it's actually going to be a while before something actually takes that crown back because AMD have got some fantastic APUs out there and this is one example of it. Maybe on their 7000 series the APUs there will actually perform a lot better but do you need anything more to play a game like that? Maybe we'll start testing a new game. Let us know in the comments if you think we should start testing a new game with these little APUs and integrated graphics to see what more they can actually do. Going into the next year, we're going to actually be using this APU to see what more it can actually push. And we're going to be testing it against some more modern games. And you won't want to miss that, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And that brings us to the end of our episode. We hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. And we'll catch you in the next one.